Hey guys, it's your math tutor. I recently got a comment from someone who is studying for their ASVABs. For those who don't know, these are timed aptitude tests that everybody in the US Armed Forces need to take and pass. One section on the ASVAB is the arithmetic reasoning section, which is basically all word problems, which I know a lot of people, even those who aren't taking the ASVABs, have trouble with. So this video is focused on how to solve word problems. I found this 15 problem practice test online and picked a couple that represent each different type of word problem you might see. You can find the full version online, I'll link it in the description box down below, but in this video we'll go through five examples. Alright, here is our first problem, let's start off easy. When we encounter word problems, the first thing we want to do is obviously read the problem, then more importantly identify what we're supposed to solve for. So we have four coworkers who contributed $2, $10, $19, and $12 respectively to purchase a retirement gift for their boss. What is the maximum amount they can spend on a gift? Most of the time in word problems, what you're trying to solve for is in the last sentence. It's asking us for the maximum amount of money they can spend. Now that we read and understand our problem, our second step is to come up with an equation. In order to find the maximum amount of money they can spend, we need to add up all of the money that they pooled and they can't spend more than that, so that's going to be your maximum. We'll get 258 plus 1020 plus 1989 plus 1289 for our equation. And in our final step, let's solve. So using my calculator, I got a total of $45.56, and that is our answer. For our second problem, we can use the same approach. Let's just first read through the problem and figure out what we're trying to solve for. We have a man who invested $150 into the stock market, during the first week, he lost $45. Then during the second week, he tripled his money. How much does he have at the end of the second week? That is the question here. Now let's come up with an equation. Let's just start off with what we know. I mean, he starts off with $150, but then he lost $45. So let's subtract 150 minus 45, which is 105. Then in the word problem, it tells us he tripled his money. So that means we have to multiply this number, 105, by 3, which equals $315. And that is actually our answer. This means he has $315 by the end of the second week. For a third question, I wanted to do a problem on ratios. Again, let's first just try to read the problem and understand what we're trying to find. The question is, a woman owns a dog walking business. If two workers can walk eight dogs, how many dogs can three workers walk? Now this is the question we're trying to figure out. Next, let's write out an equation, which to me is the hardest part about word problems, knowing how to represent words into numbers and equations. But again, let's just start off with what we know. So we have two workers walking eight dogs, and we're trying to figure out how many dogs can three workers walk. With ratios, we can pretty much write this into an equation, as long as we put all of the workers on one side of the equation and all of the dogs on the other side. So the units have to match up. With ratios, we can set them up by just dividing them by each other. So we'll get three over two, equals x over 8. Let's solve for x now, which means we need to get x by itself. But right now it's x divided by 8. So in order to get rid of this divided by 8 part, we need to do the opposite and multiply by 8. And remember, everything we do on one side of the equation, we need to do to the other. So we'll get 3 over 2 times 8 equals x. Simplifying, we'll get x equals 12, which is our answer. So that means three workers can walk 12 dogs. 
The fourth problem we have is about money and interest. And as always, let's read the problem and figure out what we're solving for. A woman has two bank accounts. One contains $329 and awards 4% in interest each month. The other contains $921 and awards 7% in interest each month. What will the combined value of her two accounts be at the end of the month? Okay, this is the important part. You want to figure out what is the combined value of her two accounts at the end of the month. Our next step is to write these sentences into an equation. It's kind of long, but again, let's take it one at a time. We can first work on her first account. It has $329 with a 4% interest rate. Interest just means that every month, the bank will give her 4% of the total amount in her account. So they'll give her 4% of 329. And in order to calculate this, you need to convert this percentage into a decimal. So you just move the decimal to the left two times. So you have 0 0.04. Then multiply 0 0.04 by 329. That's $13.16. That means the bank will give her $13.16 in interest that first month. So the total amount in her first bank account will be the original $3.29 plus the $13.16 in interest. The total amount added together is $342.16. Now let's look at her second account. We can do the same thing. It has $921 originally, and the bank is going to give her 7% interest each month. So what's 7% of 921? We can write it as 0 0.07 times 921 which is $64.47. So that means the bank is going to give her $64.47 at the end of the month. To figure out the total amount of money in her second account, let's take the original 921 and then add $64.47, which makes $985.47. Now, if you remember the original question, it was, what is the combined value of both accounts? So let's add the balances of both accounts together, and we'll get $1,327.63, which is our answer. All right, this is our last problem. It's a little more tricky ratios problem, but we can still use the same method. It tells us the manager is selling two bags of potatoes for each bag of carrots, then six bags of onions for each bag of potatoes. So we have something relating potatoes to carrots and potatoes to onions, but nothing directly relating the onions to the carrots. So we can use the potatoes as sort of a common link. Looking at these two equations, you can substitute the potatoes. So here it's saying that one potato is the same thing as six onions. So we can replace the P in the first equation with six onions. And once we simplify, we'll get 12 onions equals one carrot. And now if we go back to the original question, that is actually exactly what we wanted. If he sells 12 bags of onions, he will sell one bag of carrots. All right, that's everything I wanted to cover for today. Let me know in the comments below if there are any other types of word problems you might be having issues with. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video.